In this video, we'll learn how to apply variable data to an application in InDesign using the data merge function within InDesign. And whenever you use the data merge function, you need two things. The first being a piece of artwork, which in this case is the certificate. We're going to be replacing all the names on the certificate all at once. And we do that using a CSV file, which is the second thing. And a CSV file is essentially the text version of an Excel spreadsheet. So I've got my Excel spreadsheet right here, which I'll include as a, a download link below the video if you want to follow along. And it's very, very basic. It just has the names of the 10 people that I'm going to make the certificate for. So in order to save this as a CSV file, I'm going to go File, Save As, and choose CSV from this drop down, and hit Save. OK, so back into Photoshop. I need to remove this name for now. We're going to save this as a JPEG without the name because all the names are going to change, but everything else is going to remain the same. So I need to get the text settings for this so all the other names within InDesign will carry the same settings. So I'm going to come into my, my text dropdown, click on the name, and then go to my character palette, and I see that it's the font called Road Movie, and the size is 60 points. So now that I know this, I can turn off this layer and you'll notice I have a 1 8 inch bleed on all sides of the certificate, which we'll need to remember when we're um, creating our document settings within InDesign. So for now, we're going to go File, Save As, and we're going to save this as a JPEG. OK, so now we're going to go into InDesign, and we're going to go File, New, Document. We're going to turn off Facing Pages. And this is an 8.5 by 11 certificate, but it's landscape, so I'm going to click this icon to reverse that. And I need to apply my 1 8 inch bleed, but I don't see bleed anywhere here, so I'm going to click More Options to bring up my bleed settings. And I'm going to type in 0.125, which is the equivalent of 1 8 of an inch, and I'm going to hit OK. OK, so now I've got my document, and this red line um, dictates my bleed. And I'm going to place my JPEG that I just created now within here. So I'm going to go File, Place, and I'm going to select my JPEG and place it in. And I'm just going to line it up. OK, cool. All right, so now I need to create the text box where all the names are going to exist. And we already know the settings of the text box because we checked that out before we turned off our layer. So I'm going to grab my text tool, and I'm just going to create a text box that kind of begins right at this line where 4 is. I can even drag a guideline, and it's going to end right where Awesome ends, right here. I'll also include a, a link to this certificate if you'd like to use the same thing I'm using um, when you're trying to play around with data merge. So I'm going to just drag my text tool to create my text box. And then I'm going to apply my settings, which is Road Movie. And it's 60 points. And it's white. And if I type anything in here, it should, it, it's working. Except we need um, to make sure that this text box, um, the text is center aligned. So I go into my paragraph window, and I'm just going to click this icon. And now all of our names will be center aligned, which if I want to see how everything's going to look without all my guidelines and my margin lines and my bleed lines, all I have to do is come over to this icon and this drop down, just select preview, and everything will go away. So you can kind of get an idea of what things will look like. So I, in this case, I just want to make sure that the name is going to be centered um, between the bottom of presented to and the top of this third day. Um, so that actually looks pretty good. I might nudge it down a couple. Um, so I'm happy with that. So moving on, um, this is where data merge comes into play. So I'm going to delete what I've done so far, but all of my settings still remain the same for my text box. And I'm actually going to go back into normal mode. Um, so this data merge window right here, which if you don't see it in your your window, your toolbox window over here, you can go to Window, Utilities, and Data Merge will be right there. So it kind of gives you directions um, to guide you along. So we need to select our data source, which is our CSV file. So I'm going to drop this down and click Select Data Source. 
and then I'm going to choose my CSV file that I made. I'm going to click open and you'll see that all I had was one column and it was called name. So this is exactly what we need. So I'm going to um, put my text cursor right in my text box and I'm going to double click on name. So you're going to see these like little stars right here, but that's just because the font that I'm using doesn't have hyphens. Normally those would be hyphens. So that's just telling me my font doesn't have hyphens and that's perfectly fine because I'm not using any hyphens. So now that we've um, applied our CSV file, you can actually preview exactly how things will look by clicking this little preview button and you can um, toggle forward and you'll see that I'm getting some hyphens because the names don't, some of the longer names don't fit all the way. So we're going to correct that after we merge everything. Um, but for now, everything looks great. So I'm going to um, click this little button that is applying the merge. And you'll get this dialog box. And it's just going to alert you when things are missing, which we want. So I'm going to click OK. And here's my little um, warning that I have overset text, um, which we saw with those hyphens earlier. So I'm just going to close this because this isn't a very long document. I can figure it out on my own by just scrolling through. So that looks great. This one needs to come down a little bit. So I'm just going to click on the text box and I'm going to lower the size so the whole name will fit within it. And that looks good. I'm going to do it again for that second one. and everything else looks really good. So now I'm going to save this um, as a PDF file, but I'm also going to include my crop marks. So whoever I hand this off to sees exactly where the, the cut on the paper will um, exist because I do have this bleed to protect me from getting any white when people are cutting. So I'm going to go um, File, Adobe Pre PDF Presets, and I'm going to click High. And I'm going to save this as um, certificate and in my PDF dialog box I'm just gonna come down to marks and bleed I'm gonna choose to include my document bleed settings so my 1 8 inch bleed will exist um, within my PDF and then I'm gonna click on crop marks and I'm just gonna hit export and this is gonna save that PDF file for me that has um, the crop marks on it and then you can also save this InDesign file if you need to hand this off to anybody um, if anyone else needs to make edits on the names later on. So now um, I'm going to come over to my PDF. Sometimes this takes a little while to save because there's um, that extra data that's coming in but I mean the file isn't too bad for 10 certificates. This is 3.8 megs and if I open up my PDF you'll notice that I have these crop marks and my bleed is also included. So this is what you'd hand off um, to anyone that needs it that doesn't need the raw InDesign file. And that's basically it.